Most people can have a hard time with factoring because they don't have a true understanding of how or why it works. In this lesson, we're going to go in depth on how to explain to you how factoring works and why we use it. So we have 4a squared minus 8a, and you might get asked to go ahead and factor this binomial. Well, there's one thing that you want to pay attention to first, and that is finding the GCF. We want to find the greatest common factor of each term. So that's something we want to do first all the time. So we would look at the two terms, and we would ask ourselves, what's the greatest common factor of 4a squared and 8a? Well, first we want to go ahead and look at the numbers. So let's cover those up. What's the greatest common factor of 4 and 8? Well, I know 4 goes into 4, and 4 also goes into 8, so my greatest common factor would be 4 for the numbers. I want to go ahead and write that right here, and now let's go ahead and cover up the numbers and look at the variables. What's the greatest common factor for the variables? We have a squared, and if there's no exponent, we go ahead and put a 1. Now, in factoring, the toughest part is actually finding the greatest common factor. Once we do that, Factoring becomes a lot easier. So let's see here. a squared and a to the first power. OK, I'm going to give you guys my tip to help you out. Whenever you're going ahead and finding the greatest common factor of variables and their exponents, we want to first look to make sure they're the same variable, which is a's. So that checks out. Now we look at their exponents. Well, the tip is to make sure to find which is your smallest exponent. That will be your greatest common factor. So in this case, it's a to the first power. Now, we go ahead and we can see that we have our greatest common factor for this binomial. Like I said, that's the hardest part. Now, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and write a parenthesis right next to it. Now, this is what we're going to do. We're going to ask ourselves, 4a times what will give me 4a squared? Let's go ahead and do that. We have 4a times, well, let's look at the numbers, and let's see. 4 times what gives me 4? We know that that's 1. So we'll put a 1 there. Now let's go ahead and look at the variable. a times what gives me a squared? Well, we already have 1a, and we need 2a's, so it would be 1a. Good. Now let's go ahead and bring this minus sign down. And let's go ahead and do 4a times what will give me 8a to the first power. Again, we look at the numbers. And if you guys want to see that written out, it would be 4 times what number gives me 8. And that's what we want to put in here. 4 times, oh, 4 times 2. That makes it a lot easier, right? Let's go ahead and erase that now, and let's look at the variables. So a times what number will give me a? Well, that one's a little easier, right? a times 1 will give me a, because they're both to the power of 1. So when we do that, we would be multiplying it by 1, or you just can go ahead and leave it as a 2. So let's go ahead and erase that. Now, what you can see is that 4, a minus 2, because we'll erase that 1 there, will be the factored answer. How do we check it? Well, if you go ahead and do your distributive property, 4a times a will give me 4a squared. And then we distribute again. 4a times negative 2 will give me negative 8a. Once you go ahead and multiply it back out and you get your original binomial, you can realize that you factored it correctly. 